Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with RealAgriculture.com. We are here at Farm Tech in Edmonton, Alberta, and I have here with me Boyd Morey, who is an assistant professor at the University of Alberta. How's it going today? Good. How are you? Good. So you are here and around doing different lectures um, and different presentations, but you are specifically in entomology. That's right. So today we are going to be talking about 2020 forecasts. Sure. So, <laughs> sure. Is that what we're talking about? I guess so. <laughs> so what can you tell me, I guess, uh, what's the outlook for grasshoppers this year? Uh, so grasshoppers, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Um, we've had issues this year, the 20, pardon me, 2019, we had issues in kind of the peace um, north of Edmonton, northwest of Edmonton, kind of uh, Sangudo Barhead region. Um, but those grasshoppers seem to be a different species. Uh, we think they're Bruner's grasshoppers. Um, and if you talk to Scott Mears, he thinks they're actually on a, a two-year cycle. So we're kind of hoping and predicting that in those regions, um, we probably won't have a grasshopper issue in 2020. Fingers crossed. Um, down in southern Alberta, uh, we've had a lot of heat. Uh, it's you know, we've had our drought conditions, so we had grasshopper issues as well. Um, we might see some, and the, the forecast is looking like there could be still some higher populations of grasshoppers down there, especially kind of Lethbridge south to the border. So where do you think this new uh, species came from? <laughs> it's not, well, it's not really a, a new species. It's just one that they didn't r used to recognize as a, as, a, as a significant pest. Okay. Yep. Um, and so it's always been there, and then it just seems to be now it's the dominant pest in that region. And uh, how about any cabbage seed pod weevil? weevil. Ooh, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> yeah. Those weevils. <laughs> Those evil weevils, Those right? Those evil weevils. Yeah. Uh, so cabbage seed pod weevil, it's always been kind of a, a, a southern Alberta problem. Uh, probably around 2010 and yeah, afterwards, we saw it jet upwards as far north as Edmonton, even a little bit past. Um, these past couple years, 2019 for sure, it seems to have retracted again. Um, so the higher numbers are really south of Calgary, um, kind of in its historical area. Um, again, kind of that Lethbridge, Tabor, that region really has higher populations and, and further south even towards kind of Milk River. Um, so generally in, in that region, you know, the first fields that come into flower, most, most will be sprayed with insecticide. Um, after that, we kind of, if we kind of think of it, kind of uh, early flowering fields and mid and then late, the mid flowering fields occasionally are sprayed with insecticide and usually those late flowering fields, are, they aren't need to be treated. Um, cabbage seed pod weevil are highly visual and they're really attracted to those flowering fields. And so when you're one of the first to come into flower, uh, you're attracting basically all these weevils. You're the only field around. So you just have a lot of insects in that field. But as more come into flower, they spread out. And so you see less, the damage is spread out as well. And how do the Bertha armyworms look for 2020? Bertha armyworm. Uh, so in the Peace region, we've had about three years of an outbreak now. Uh, I was talking to a couple of people yesterday and they said, you know, uh, I think it was in municipal district of Sunrise County. They thought probably about 75% of the canola acres were sprayed last year wow. for Bertha armyworm. So it's been pretty significant. Um, it usually has a six or seven year cycle. Uh, so we're thinking it should hopefully start be starting to reduce uh, co this coming year. Uh, but we really want to be monitoring for it and really have our eye out for it. Uh, in central Alberta, there's kind of been a few hot spots, but it seems to be pretty low at the moment. Southern Alberta last year, again, closer to Lethbridge, uh, we did see some minor spraying. Um, we're hoping, you know, this winter we had really cold temperatures. Uh, down south there was little snow cover. We're really hoping that might set them back and have killed off quite a few. And back to the weevils, because I forgot about our one friend, the pea leaf weevil. How are they doing for 2020? Yeah, pea leaf weevil is, a, is another interesting one. Historically, it's always been an issue, again, southern Alberta. Uh, it's made now the climb all the way into the Peace. Um, so it seems to be pretty uh, well established in the municipal district of Smoky River, kind of around Folair, uh High high prairie, um, that region. Uh, but it's very, very low levels. Um, but once you come around Edmonton, we, we're we have high numbers of, of pea leaf weevil, um, particularly, again, going up further north of Edmonton and to the west, uh, we see really high numbers. Um, so in, in pea, definitely, that's where we're surveying. Um, but in, uh, in fava bean, it's actually a preferred host. So in fava bean, if producers are, are growing fava, they should really be aware of the potential for pea leaf weevil damage. Further south, um, actually in central Alberta, kind of around red deer, there hasn't been the, the populations seem to be really low. Um, and then, again, down more towards, towards Lethbridge, the historical region, there, 
they're, you know, moderate, I would say. Have I missed any of the big ones? I think we I think we covered them. Uh, wheat midge. Oh, wheat midge. Yeah. Um, so wheat midge, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. It really needs uh, good moisture levels combined with the, the right time, like a phenological stage of the crop in order to infest it. Um, these past few years, you know, it's been so dry that we really haven't had uh, much uh, wheat midge issues, at least widespread uh, wheat midge issues. There still, it seems to be up in the Peace region, a few areas that uh, have higher numbers. It's not necessarily picked up on the, on the forecast map. So if you, if you look at the wheat midge forecast, they're, they're, they don't appear to be high numbers in the Peace. But we have talked to producers, especially around Folaire, who still say they have quite high numbers of wheat midge in some of their fields. Um, but everywhere else, it seems to be, it seems to be fairly low. So moving, I guess, more into some of the work you're doing at U of A now, you're headed into your first kind of full research year. That's right, yeah. Um, what's, what's in the books? What's on the books? Um, so we're, uh, right now we have an alfalfa weevil project going on. So it's one project that I'm working with Hector Carcamo on, um, in particularly in alfalfa seed productions in southern Alberta. Uh, we've found, we've identified insecticide resistance in a few populations. Um, so now we're trying to determine, you know, what products are they resistant to? Is it just a single class of insecticide or is there multiple? Um, we're looking at what is the range or distribution, how far out from these few sites that we've located, is there still insecticide resistance? Um, as well, we're going to be looking at the biodiversity within these fields and are there, there we know there are several parasitoids of uh, alfalfa weevil, and so are they present in these fields and can, we might have to start potentially relying on them to control these populations. And how long is the research on that? Uh, we have another three years of funding for that. Um, yeah, so that should be, a graduate student was just hired um, starting in January to work with Hector and I. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah. I look forward to seeing, I guess, what comes out of that yeah. and any uh, research looking forward to the future. It's nice talking to you, Boyd. You too. Thank you.